This is my entry for the speaker cover design contest recently put up by the 3D printing nerd. Just a quick overview before we begin. The overall shape was created by revolving an arc and shelling. There are three types of panels here. A honeycomb panel, a three-tiered triangular panel, and a third panel that consists of three concentric rings. Each of these panels were derived from the original revolved body. Let's start with the main revolve. Begin a sketch on the front plane. Sketch a vertical line and a horizontal line, with both meeting at the origin. Join these two lines with a three-point arc. Draw a horizontal construction line that meets the arc at this point. Make the arc tangent to this line. Select the vertical line, which will turn this into a center line for the revolve by going to the sketch palette and selecting the center line option. Confirm the sketch. Go to create, revolve. Because of the existence of the center line, both the profile and the axis can automatically select it. Go to modify, shell. Select the bottom face and adjust the thickness. Start a sketch on the top plane. Go to Create, Polygon, Circumscribe Polygon. Center this on the origin. Press Tab to activate the fill for entering the number of sides and enter 6 to get a hexagon. Press Tab again to switch to the dimension field. Add a vertical constraint to this edge. Confirm the sketch. Go to Modify, Split Body. Select the main body as a body to split. For splitting tool, click on the select box and select the sketch. We are now going to split out the triangular and the ring panel. We can certainly do this with three sketch lines and then use a split body command. I'm actually going to try something new here. Let's name the hexagonal panel body and hide it. I'm going to use this body to split itself. Go to Modify, Split Body. Select the main body to split. For splitting tool, click on the select box and select this face. This face is a result of the split body done using the hexagonal sketch. If we extend the splitting tool, the resultant cutting line would automatically be collinear with the edge of the hexagon. Typically, we would use a separate entity to split the body. In this case, we are leveraging on the body's own face to cut itself. Repeat this process another two times, using these two faces as cutting tools. Let's name the two panels. We do not have any use for the other two bodies. Control select them and right click. Instead of deleting them, we want to remove them. This removes the bodies and creates steps in the timeline. Take note that deleting bodies would actually delete any reference features in the timeline, so do not use that. Let's hide the triangular panel for the moment and focus on detailing the ring panel. We are going to use a new thin extrude feature with open profiles to make the cut. Begin a sketch on the front plane. Draw a horizontal line. Now 
dimension into 7mm from the origin. Make this endpoint in line with the origin by imposing a vertical constraint on the two points. Dimension the length to exceed the body. Begin the extrude command. Select the thin extrude option and select the line as a profile. Let's make the direction symmetric and control the distance such that it completely cuts through the body. Adjust the wall thickness. In this case, we are adjusting the thickness of the cut. Make the cut symmetrical about the sketch line by setting the wall location to center. To create the effect of concentric rings, we are going to pattern the cut. Go to Create, Pattern, Rectangular Pattern. For Type, select Features and select the extruded cut. For Directions, click on the Select box and select the Y axis. For Distance Type, select Spacing. Set the quantity and Distance. Set the Compute option to Adjust. Let's remove this top body. As you hover over the body, it will be highlighted in the Bodies folder. Right-click on the body and Remove. Let's name the rings. It might also be a good idea to reorder the bodies, just to make the list of bodies more presentable. You can simply drag the bodies into position. This has no impact on the order of features in the timeline. Let's hide all the rings. And bring back the triangular panel. We need to make this panel thicker through an offset. Go to Modify, Offset Face. Select the top face and set the offset distance to 6. In order to create the tiered effect, we are going to split this panel into three layers and shell each of these layers. Let's split out the top layer. Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Offset. Select the top face and set the offset distance to negative 2. This will create a surface body 2 mm underneath the top face. It will serve as a cutting tool. Go to Modify, Split Body. Select the solid body as a body to split. And select the surface body as a splitting tool. When a surface body was created, you can see that this edge is still submerged within the solid body. So we will need to extend the splitting tool to ensure that it fully cuts through the solid. Let's rename and hide the first layer. Remove the surface body. We will repeat the process to split out the second layer. So the triangular panel has been split into three layers. Let's hide the middle and bottom layers. Activate the Solid tab. Go to Modify, Shell. Select these two faces. And set the Shell thickness. Hide the top layer and bring back the middle layer for shelling. Lastly, show the bottom layer.
Let's bring back all three layers to take a look. Begin the fillet command. Select these three edges. Set the fillet radius. Go to the dialog box and click on this plus sign to add another set. Add a third set. Next, we will be creating this step. Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Offset. With the Chain Selection option checked, select this face. Set an offset distance of negative 2. We are going to use this surface body to split the top face. Go to Modify, Split Face. Select the top face as the face will split. Select the surface body as a splitting tool. Extend the splitting tool. Let's remove the surface body. This is the resultant split face. Activate the Solid tab. Go to Modify, Offset Face. And raise this surface by 2. So we have completed the triangular panel. Let's bring back the rings. Go to Modify, Combine and combine all these bodies into one. Let's rename the resultant body and hide it for the moment. Now, we shall create one of the bosses. First, create a sketch on the top plane. Draw a circle of diameter 13. Align this horizontally with the origin. Set an extrude with this profile. Bring back the combined body from the previous operation and set the operation to join. Next, we need to create a counter ball. Let's use the whole command to do this. Select the top face. Drag the center point of the hole and snap it to the center of the boss. For extent, select all. For hole type, select counter ball. For hole tab type, select simple. For drill point, select flat. Adjust the counter ball dimensions. We want the top of the boss to follow this curved face of the previous step that we created. We shall leverage on this existing face to create a surface body for the cut. Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Offset. Select the top face of the step. Set the offset distance to 0 so that we can create a copy of the face in the same location. Go to Modify, Split Body, and use the Surface Body to split the boss. Extend the Splitting Tool. Let's remove both the Access Body and the Surface Body. We want to create another boss here using the circular pattern command.
For type, select Features. Go to the timeline and select the boss extrude, the counter ball, and the split body features. Select the Y axis as a pattern axis. Instead of a full pattern, we will be going for a partial pattern. For angular spacing, select Angle and set a total angle of 60. Set the quantity to 2. Set the compute option to identical. For some reason, this has created an empty body. Let's remove that. Hide this body and bring back the hexagonal panel. Looking at the final result, you can see that the pattern does not extend all the way to the edge of the panel. There is a slight offset. Start a sketch on the top plane. Let's project the original hexagon by selecting this face and pressing P. If we hide the body, we can see the projected lines in purple. Create an offset sketch using these lines. Confirm the sketch and bring back the body. Go to Modify, Split Body. We will split this hexagonal panel using the offset sketch. Next, we shall create a seed or starting hexagonal cut. Begin a sketch on the top plane. Center the hexagon on the origin. Adjust the number of size and dimension. Add a vertical constraint to this edge. Draw a line from the origin to the midpoint of this line. Draw another line from the origin to the midpoint of the adjacent line. Set both of these lines to construction. These two lines will serve as directions during the pattern. Create an extruder cut with this sketch. For extent type, select All. Go to Create, Pattern, Rectangular Pattern. For type, select Features and select the extruder cut. For directions, click on the Select box. Bring back the sketch and select the two construction lines. For distance type, select spacing. Adjust the quantity and distance. For direction type, set to symmetric for both. All three compute options will work. You can see that the pattern is restricted to the inner body. This is because the first extruded cut only went through the inner body. So even though we adjusted the pattern beyond the inner body, the subsequent pattern cuts will only cut through the inner body. Let's combine these two bodies. Bring back the combined body consisting of the ring and triangular panels. Begin a circular pattern. For type, select bodies and select this body. Select the Y axis as the pattern axis. Set the quantity to 3. Lastly, combine all these bodies into one.